geometry students, Mr. Zazik back and better than ever. We are in unit six, lesson two. I just had a nice big cup of Stewart's coffee and I'm ready to roll. Um, now, what you've kind of seen throughout the course of this year and what we'll continue to do is we're going to explore something and we're going to explore the properties of it and then we'll do some work with the properties and then we'll kind of flip that around and look at how can we prove that something is there. So today we're going to be looking at the properties of parallelograms. And uh, so a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Now um, notice over here this notation um, indicates parallel. So those little uh, triangles on there um, indicate that. So in a quadrilateral, opposite sides do not share a vertex and opposite angles do not share a side. So as we look at this diagram here of ABCD, opposite sides would be AB and DC would be one pair, or um, AD and BC. So I'll just highlight those just to help you see that clearly. So we've got AB and DC, that's a pair of opposite sides, or AD and um, BC. Now opposite angles would be angle A and angle C, okay? or angle D and angle B. So we just want to make sure that we're, we're talking about the same thing. So angle A and angle D, those are opposite angles. Now when we talk about um, sides of a polygon that share an endpoint are adjacent sides and angles of a polygon that share a side are consecutive angles. So in this example here, um, adjacent sides would be like DA would be adjacent to AB, or AB would be adjacent to BC, or BC would be adjacent to CD. Notice that they both, the, in those pairs, they have the same letters. So adjacent angles would be um, angle D and angle A, or angle A and angle B. And you can kind of think of that as like, as you're sort of working your way around with it angles, they're just the ones that are next to it. So that word consecutive there is a way to indicate that. All right, so we have a few theorems. And uh, when you want to keep these in mind, these are going to be um, reasons. Uh, used in proofs, as well as, you know, just properties that we can apply. So in a quadrilateral, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. So in this diagram here, we could say that AD is congruent to BC. We could also say that AB is congruent to DC, and that theorem would be the reason. Um, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary, okay? And um, if you will, if you notice that a parallelogram, um, this is really, when we say consecutive angles, we're really talking about same side interior angles. So that's another way of saying consecutive angles, but consecutive is just a, a little different language that we can use because it works for any of these, but D and A are consecutive. They're really same side interior angles. Um, A and B, those are same side, but they're consecutive angles, all right? Uh, another uh, theorem, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. So over here, angle A is congruent to angle C. Angle D is congruent to angle B. All right, and then in a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. And so when they bisect each other, they um, form those congruent segments there. All right, and uh, 
So those are some of the unique properties. Now we're going to prove the, this theorem and we're going to prove that ABC, given ABCD is a parallelogram, we want to prove that AB and CD and BC and AD are uh, congruent to each other. Now, we do know, we just said that that's one of the theorems, so kind of down the road we can use that as a reason, but remember, all theorems um, have to be proved. And so um, what we know about a parallelogram is that opposite sides are parallel. So we could say here that AB is parallel to CD, and we could say that BC is parallel to AD. So that's the basic kind of definition of a parallelogram. So we could say in a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay. Now, since they're parallel, angle 3 and angle 2 are alternate interior angles, and angle 1 and angle 4 are alternate interior angles, and we know that those are going to be congruent. So we could say angle 3 is congruent to angle 2, and we could say angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. If two lines are cut by a transversal, cut by a transversal and parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So you could, um, you know, that's, we can write it in one step. We could do it in more steps, but it, since it's the same reason, let's just write it in one step. Now both of those triangles share side AC, so by the reflexive property, AC is congruent to AC. Reflexive property. All right, now we know that the triangles, or we've got enough there to prove that the triangles are congruent. So triangle ABC, got to be a little careful here. Since we started with A, in the other one, we need to start with C, D, A. Okay, and that would be by angle side angle, congruent to angle side angle. And then we can say that AB is congruent to CD, all right, and BC is congruent to DA by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we just proved that reason. Now, in future instances, you're going to be able to just go directly and say that opposite sides are congruent because it is a property of parallelograms. But throughout the course of the year, we, we like to show um, those different, different things, okay? Uh, show some of the proofs of them. That was not very specific. All right, so we have another theorem. If three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, then they cut off congruent segments on every transversal. So if you look at the diagram over here on the left-hand side, and you'll notice that this transversal here, so if we know that those are parallel, and again, you see the little triangles, they indicate parallel, all right, and AC is congruent to EC, then what we can conclude is over here that these segments must also be congruent, okay? So... Um, B, D, and D, F are also going to be congruent to each other. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, um, put some of this thinking into work here and just kind of see if we can make the right connections. All right, so find A, B, the measure of angle D, and the measure of angle C. So first of all, what I want to recognize is this is a parallelogram. because both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. 
And the way that we see that is from the tick marks. That's kind of our identifier. So therefore, we've got a couple things. Number one, okay, opposite sides are congruent. So therefore, 2x minus 3 equals x plus 2. It doesn't matter which side of the equal sign you get that. So let's subtract x, add 3. So we're going to get x equals 5. All right. Now we need to find AB. So AB is x plus 2, which would be 5 plus 2. So AB would be 7. All right. That's the first thing that we need to find. Now we need to find the measure of angle D. So second thing we can do is opposite angles are congruent. So the measure of angle D equals the measure of angle B. And we know that the measure of angle B is 127, so therefore the measure of angle D equals 127. Okay, that was the second thing. Now we need to find uh, the third thing, which is the measure of angle C, and here's where we want to think of consecutive angles are supplementary. So therefore, the measure of angle B, angle C, plus the measure of angle B equals 180. So the measure of angle C plus 127 equals 180. So therefore, the measure of angle C would be 53 degrees. All right. And we've answered all the parts of those. Okay. All right, now number two in a parallelogram, KLMN, find KM and LN. All right, so the property that we're going to use here is we want to recognize that the diagonals um, bisect each other. So as a result of that, what we can say here is x equals y plus 2 and... Um, y plus 10 equals 2x minus 8. All right, now what you notice is we have two equations and two variables. And we've got different methods of solving this. This one to me is set up well for substitution because the x is isolated in the first one. So what is x equal y plus 2? So what we can do in this situation is I can go and replace in this equation x in terms of y. Now we've got an equation where we only have one variable and we can, um, you know, arrive at a numerical solution. So we've got to distribute here 2y plus 4 minus 8. So y plus 10 equals 2y minus 4. Let's add the 4 over and subtract the y. Okay, so add, we're going to add 4, so we're going to get 14 equals y. Now x, which is y plus 2, is going to be 14 plus 2, so x is going to be 16. What are we trying to find? Km. Well, Km equals y plus 10 plus 2x minus 8. So Km is y, which is 14, plus 10, plus 2, times 16, minus 8. So we get 14 and 10 is 24, plus 32, 24 and 32 is 56, minus 8 is 48. Okay, and then ln, we do the same way, ln is x plus y plus 2. So ln would be x is 16, y is 14 plus 2, so ln equals 32. All right, so again, the key property here to identify is that in a parallelogram, the diagonals are uh, bisect each other, okay? So in this figure, they're all parallel. We see that on the lines. So AB is 2, um, BC is 2. CD is 2, EF is 2.25, what is EH? Well, 2.25, 2.25, that's that theorem that we just talked about. So EH is 
um, well, I'm just going to do 3 times 2.25, all right, which would be um, 8.75. You could add them all up and, and do it that way. Um, so in B, if these are all, this gives us a little scenario to use a different color. If these are all 6 and AD is 15, so that would be this whole section, what would CD be? So CD would equal one-third of 80, one-third of the total, because they're all going to be equivalent. So CD would be one-third of 15, which would be 5. All right, so there we go. Got some good stuff here, and we're going to have to just kind of dig into these properties. So good luck, and uh, let's ask questions and keep on asking questions. See you soon.